Yeah, it's time to fucking finish this finally, honestly. Ugh. <laughs> you know, before we start though, I would like to say something. So, it really annoys me that like, technically you get the option to be like, uh, you know, gay or straight or like, bi or whatever in, I think it was episode three? Was it episode three or two? I don't remember. You know, you get that option, but your options are two ugly white bitches. <laughs> like, like you got dreadlock man or dreadlock girl. Like, that's really the only options that you get. And then in the last episode, episode four, you know, you have the one guy who is gay, but you can't romance him. And I'm just like, um, okay, so we just... You know, we only get to choose from the tr bottom of the trash. We don't get to... <laughs> like, really? I thought that was so stupid. Like, at least give me the option to flirt or something. Like, I don't... You give me a fishing line and then you just take some scissors and you cut it. Like, it just makes no sense. Okay, anyway. Oh, yep, there's the wall. Also, this episode, when I was downloading it, was 9 gigabytes, so I, I better be getting some big shit going on in this episode, let me tell you. Like, I know it's like a culmination of all the choices, supposedly, but something better wow me in this, because so far I have not been wowed at all. <laughs> Let's get that Once spicy time, recap. In a wild, wild world, there were two wolf brothers living in their home lair with their papa wolf. They lived in peace. So hunters took their dad away. The wolf brothers wandered for days and nights, learning how to live on their own for the first time. That's when the big brother discovered that the little one was not an ordinary wolf, but a super wolf. They decided to head south to the distant land of their ancestors. But the journey was long and dangerous. Still, the Wolf Brothers made new friends on the way. They learned more about the world. But danger seemed to always follow them after a bad accident. They were separated. The Big Brother had been hurt, and the hunters finally captured him. They put him in a cage. But when he finally escaped, he went to search for his little brother. He soon found out that the little wolf had joined a coyote cult, and he would not leave them. Like Suddenly, a bitch. their mother showed up after all that time. She said she came to help rescue him. They begged the coyote leader, but she would not release the little wolf. He was their idol so they had to knock her out to escape the wolf brothers now reunited followed their rogue mother far into the desert to her hideaway okay Seven weeks, Arizona. So that's a month and a half, okay. Actually, almost two months. Sean? Mm. Dude, come on. 
What? What time is it? Get up! It's so beautiful. Check it out. <laughs> so? Yeah, okay. Good call. Wow. That's amazing. I know. Are we gonna draw it? Is your eye okay? Yeah. It just itches. It's okay, Nano. I... Promise. Yeah. Uh, okay. I love you. No matter what happens. You hear me? That's a yeah. big promise to make. I love you too. I mean, I guess he did blind you. Ah! So where's Mama? Diaz brothers. Always. So... Are you still having those bad dreams? You know, about Lisbeth? Yeah. Sometimes... I feel like she's around, coming after me. It's scary. <sighs> she's lucky you didn't go after her. Yeah, but she's still out there. Somewhere. Creeps me out. <sighs> Listen, we're far away from her. Okay, we're together again. Safe. Hope so. Sean. Are we criminals now? I mean, let's see. Uh, we got arson. Um, we did tear up that gas station. Um, we got... <laughs> like, oh, I mean... A little bit. Oh, we did help in making weed. Uh, what else do we do? We did. We did. We did a lot. I, th I think we're sort of, sort of, sort of. We did a lot of illegal shit. Yeah. <laughs> if the cops catch us, we'll be judged for what we did. That's for sure. Yeah. I know. Well, we're almost at the border. Finally. I like it here, but we'll have to leave soon. I know. I'm sorry, Anna. Sean, I know it's been a long time. Can you tell me the rest of the wolf story? Oh, yeah. I can tell you. Been forever since we left off. Way too long. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, thanks to their mama wolf, the wolf brothers barely escaped from the coyote cult. She led them to her secret lair deep in the red desert. The wolf brothers rested for a while. But at some point, they'd have to continue their journey south. They were closer than ever to their father's land, but between them and their destination lied a mighty fire unicorn. <laughs> but she's nice, so they become friends. <laughs> uh, um, excuse me, who's telling the story? Yeah, bitch. Hello. You are, but it's my story too. 
right? This is my virgin. Nah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Okay, then. So what happens next? Uh, they, they arrive in Mexico, but the country is rampaged by goblins. Together, the wolves and the unicorn manage to slay them and become heroes. The police forgives them, and all their friends come to Mexico to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Sounds pretty good, and I know. Let's back this shit up and head back to town. Hold on, though. I want to see. Can I draw? Gotta clean up our stuff before we leave. And this place is too pretty. I'm glad we had these. I'm not a fan of desert critters. Kind of sucks. I can't talk to Sean. Okay, we're here. I can pet. Oh, telescope. I hope we can go watch the stars again. Mom said there's a moon eclipse coming up soon. <laughs> I'm in. This place is cool. I could just move here. Hey, I can help. Just tell me what you want to put in there. You are the man. Um. Let's clean up this mess. Not if it cleans up by itself. Stop. Daniel. Can't catch it, huh? No shit. Now cut it out. Jeez. You're no fun. <laughs> Yo, Captain Can, can you take these away? Sure. And no funny business. Of course not. Perfect formation. Activate flashlight. On the way. I swear Dad had that same book in the garage. Yeah, I think he did. Why did he never show it to us? Maybe it reminded him of Mom too much. Oh. Yeah, right. <gasps> Draw! Ooh, sketching time. Good idea. <laughs> I'm glad you can still draw after, you know. <laughs> me too, Dan. After you blinded me? Yeah. But if I can see it in my mind, I can still sketch anything. The talent. Almost. We'll see about that. <laughs> Very funny. Smart ass. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hmm. Pretty good. But I can add more details if I want. My oh wow! Hurts a little. I'm glad we're sleeping in our bed. Hey, can you draw me as a superhero? Like striking a pose over the tin. Hmm. I can try. Uh, what should we do? Chilled or badass? So I'm, I'm wondering, what exactly does chilled mean? <laughs> Like, I don't understand that. Like, I'm thinking badass. Just to appease him a little bit. Ruff looks cool, but messy. Should I keep going? Oh, that looks cool. Tada. Finished. Let me check it out. Please. Do I really look that evil? He looks more like a super villain. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Daniel, stop using your power. So <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, let's hit the 
trail, cowboy. What are you doing? What the fuck, dude? Don't do that. What's wrong? Stop messing with it, man. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, little guy. Don't get eaten by eagles. Do eagles eat scorpions? No idea. <laughs> cool. Let's go. At least you listen to me, which is like shocking. Yo, can I just go over the edge? I saw my falling stars, or any. Hey, we saw the Milky Way, dude. How cool is that? Yeah, that's true. And Mars. That was so cool Arthur and Stanley let us use the telescope. Yeah, these guys are real cool. Oh, what's this? Didn't Joanne will let me help her with a sculpture when we get back? Hell yeah. You're like the magic assistant. It's nice to be able to use my power out here. Not hide it. Yeah. Karen was right. You're all cool with it. Mom doesn't say much about my power. Why do you think? Hey. See this? <sighs> Looks like the ones you did back in that cabin. When you got sick. Oh, totally. Wait, does that mean other people were here? Of course. Well, yeah. Maybe someone from away did it. Oh, I bet it was Joanne. So, uh, where were we? She's. Um, Confused. Like, what do you mean? She's my mom. Well, you know. I mean, she hasn't seen you for years. I'm not sure she can deal with all of this at the same time. Amazing that anything can grow out here. Does it ever rain in the desert? Well,. Oh, uh, good question. Anyway, are these things poisonous or something? <laughs> it's a cactus, dude. It stings. That's all. <laughs> okay, I think there are poisonous cactus, though. <laughs> or cacti. My so legs are gonna be like yours after all this hiking now. Got the munchies. Hope Karen has some food. Oh, okay. <laughs> this looked more dangerous than it was. <laughs> Need help getting down? Dude, I got this. Ugh. See? Easy peasy. Until you fall on your ass. Yeah, but I didn't. Oh, I don't like this part. <laughs> I don't like this part. Oh, look. Look. Oh, man. I just saw a cool baby lizard. Yeah, and you scared it. I know. Looks like a job for our local super psychic boy. So, maybe he can help us get out of here? Mm, I'll try. Step back. Be super careful.
There you go. I hope it's okay. <laughs> nice, man. Whoa. Like a whole little neighborhood. Oh, that's worrisome. Episode 5, Wolves. The fact that this one, the title card for this one was shown only a half hour this time or shown after only a half hour. Like the other ones, it's always been like an hour and then it shows a title card. Wonder what that means. Is this gonna be like a really hey, short episode? Go, see what doing. <laughs> go for it. I have to bring back the telescope to Stanley and Arthur. Went to town for weekly supplies. Some pancakes left in the kitchen. <laughs> back soon. Just shove that in your ass, like what? Daniel, you copy? Yes, I read you. Ten four. I have a pancake alert in the kitchen. Repeat, pancake alert. Whatever. Joanne has waffles. Over and out. Ten four. No flying pancakes today. Um, pancakes are so much better. Let me tell you something. Okay, so we gotta take USB key. We should take a look and see what we still have. Okay, we got a flashlight, constellations. Um, now I'll be able to look at the stars in a new way. Thanks, Karen. We got our garbage. Oh, uh, yeah, we have to... Sean's inventory, okay. Aw. Okay, so we got our journal. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, Karen wants to talk. It's hard, but I'm trying to hear her out. Not sure I'll ever understand what she's been through or what she's after, but I can try. We got Daniel finally. The freak guru can go to hell now. Feels so good to be with my bro again. Leaving Haven Point, Karen is taking us to her place. We need to breathe. Sleep. Heal. Sarah Lee. Uh, Karen lives in a desert commune. No shit. Unincorporated community, she said. It's called away. Only 30 people live here on and off. The This place is so weird, but the desert is mind-blowing. The perfect hideaway. Oh, I like that little Hollywood away sign. Oh, they look so badass. Um, Daniel's still feeling so confused. Guilt tripping a lot. He can't figure out what happened. The brainwashing the lies, Lizbeth's grasp over his trauma, doing my best to help him recover. Sure hope they find now. Karen is a big help too, she's good with words. That letter from Jacob and Sarah made him happy. Daniel needs more friends, so do I. Sean, we pose in. <laughs> oh, I like that picture on the bottom left. A uh, total trip to live with Karen again. She wants to move on. That's easy for her to say. I'm trying. Daniel is getting better. I can see he loves having mommy back. Daniel's power is no secret here. No one gives a shit. 
They just go along with it and don't see it as something they can use to their own advantage. Refreshing. Groar. Who's going to tell? We're already the, the batshit crazy sand people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this place away is what you make it. Joan haunts it with cool-ass sculptures made from scavenged tr scraps. She's a cool and sunny woman. Karen's closest thing to a best friend, it seems. Cool as heck ornamental tattoos. Take my time today. Arthur and Stanley live in one of the only proper houses in town. They built it together 10 years ago from ruins of the past lives, of, of their past lives. Uh, these two can't stop teasing each other, but they're so inspiring. Old couple, young love. <laughs> Got a letter from the Humboldt crew today. So cool. Would we'll love to hang with them again someday. So you guys are getting letters. Interesting. This place makes me want to draw. Could stare at these canyons forever. Um, Daniel needs to vent out. He's been having nightmares about Haven Point and Lizbeth for weeks. Still feels guilty about my eye. Need to find ways to help him process this. Karen told us about a cool camping spot, reached the top after a long hike across the canyon. Track sessions feel like a forever ago. Need to work on my cardio. Don't fall, mate. Ursa Major, man, Horsarius. <laughs> Probably the best view ever. Gonna stargaze all night thanks to Arthur's telescope. Daniel seems happy. Man, Horsius. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, well, the last one was just the photo that we did. Poems. Yeah, some poems. She's really good at rewriting her own life. I am a solo Mobius strip. Just when I reach the end, I go back to the beginning. Resign myself to new faces, the privilege to escape and rewrite another draft. Goddess laughs at plans, then shows me the page left unmarked for years. Out in the ghost desert, the seeds turn, return as saplings to reveal their age and power. Now I go back forward, layered with fear and hope, to water the children of the sun. This one's pretty intense. I think I get it. Um, don't believe I would find a soul within or without a church. A miracle with sleep and food and fuck. A day without shit until it was not. Now we run to celestial spires, oh visions of the fake prophet engulfed in ego and belief. As the burning cross falls on all your cruel angels. I am the bonfire of vanities, so when the dam breaks, we all flood like glass on a mirage, if I believe. Oh my god, stop. Whoa. I hope Karen sends this to Claire and Steven. Okay. Set her life story. <laughs> um, hi, Mom and Dad. I've been thinking about this letter for a while, and I know it's been a long, long time coming. So I'm sitting here tonight thinking about the words I should have written 10 years ago. You always used to say everything happens for a reason. We fought about it then. Oh, God. Hold on. <coughs> Ugh. So the ones in dark gray are crossed out, I'm guessing. Um, I understand why now. There's a reason I feel like I have to reach out to you both tonight from the desert. I know you've only heard from me one, once by phone and six times by letter for almost a decade. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you, and I was certainly not trying to punish you, like you told me. Don't laugh, but I just didn't know what to say or write. Poets block. Just like how you had to block me from your life after I left Esteban. I understand that was how you had to deal with the problem child, an only child who didn't live up to your expectations. There's no denying that I failed you, but the burden, weight of your aspirations as parents failed me too. You had such a rigid opinion of what I was supposed to be that I just didn't have the chance, opportunity to explore who I actually was. You wanted a daughter to grow up happy, find a good job and great husband, settle down to breed, <laughs> to have kids, raise them in faith to continue the cycle of suburbia. That daughter wasn't me. I know you were raised in a different time and culture, so I didn't understand your point of view, like you didn't understand your wayward daughter. Maybe a bridge too far for us at the time. After Danny was born, you know I wanted to take a break some time to figure things out in my head and heart. It didn't make sense to you, you or Dad, and I get that, but you didn't see how I was so desperate and only Esteban was willing to give me that time because he saw how unhappy I was. I don't blame you for my decision to leave, and maybe a time out would have led to the same outcome. We will never know, and I try not to live in regret. My life has been a roller coaster, and there have been times I long to hear your voices and thoughts even the negative ones. And I know when I last talked to you in New York to ask for help in paying back my debts, you wanted to help, but it was on your condition to return right back to where I couldn't return. I hate that. I hate that was our last. Oh, you said that wrong. I hate that was 
our last conversation. I'm sorry I reached out to you this day. I'm sorry I broke your hearts. I'm sorry I let you break, broke, I let you broke mine for silencing me for so long. <laughs> Girl, your your English. Um, I think we've paid our dues. And now I sit under a blue field of crystal stars like the poet I hope I am, writing and waiting for a chance to rebuild an old bridge with my mother and father. I hope we can cross it one more time. Love, your daughter. Wow, she crossed out love. She's like, I don't fucking love you. Oh, what? Either Karen was desperate for a job, or she loved working with kids. Karen has been camping in her own house since we arrived. Daniel's Big Ten late birthday party. Oh shit! Made him feel so happy. So Daniel's ten now. One thing Claire and Karen have in common: their love for pancakes. Those look really thick, by the way. <laughs> Those are some thick pancakes. I do remember Karen would drown her pancakes in hot sauce. What? Ugh, gross. Ew. Let's leave tonight. Let's go. <laughs> Karen doesn't even like to leave this place just to go shopping. Karen must have been so excited to finally hit New York. Uh, fly by night, not by fright. Into the big city bright. Stop. That cliche never dying in the steel of the buildings, the warp of the street. But no matter what or where I spin, the pull of a million dead poets takes me to dance once again. Go. But this time I get to lead. Until the next flight. Karen looks so young and fragile on this picture. Hard times. Is that Maggie and Karen, Summer Eleven, Kissimmee, Florida? Looks like they all finally found their home. Wow, look at this wholesome group. She was that close. Sucks she had to pay all that money back. Uh, Ravensbury Press, June 21st, 2010. Dear Miss Reynolds, pursuant to our conversation on June 10th and your inability to submit your poetry manuscript the other way to Ravensbury Press by the contracted deadline on June 1st, 2010, despite repeated efforts to accommodate you, we regret to inform you that this breach of contract means we shall no longer be publishing the collection as part of our new Poets series. As stated in the section 6 of our contract, see attached copy, if the author fails to deliver the manuscript by the agreed date, the publisher has a right to recover the full amount of the $10,000 advance. We have concluded with this letter a repayment form and schedule. As stated in section 23 of our contract, see attached copy, the rights for your manuscript shall revert back to the author upon full repayment of the advance. If you have any further questions, please refer them to our legal team. We wish you the best of luck with your future endeavors. Oof. Huh. Is that the same person who rode her back in Beaver Creek? Oh, when talking about her Beaver Creek? Mm hmm. Uh, hi, Rumi. Oh, wait, hold on. August 4th, 2010. Hi, Rumi. Yes, I know New York in August is hot as balls. You did say you like the heat, but my apartment under the roof can be really suffocating. Don't want to rub it in, but Aspen is my new summer home. Daily temperature around 70 degrees and hot tub at night. Anthony's cabin is more like a ski lodge. Next trip, maybe you can tag along. Poets retreat. Best cure for your writer's block. And please let me know when you can pay me back for August rent. I definitely need it for next month and up here in Aspen. I'll see you, in, see, I'll see you on September 5th instead of the 4th, so put your clothes on. Stay out of trouble and remember to water my babies this time. Love ya, Emma. Damn, it's a hell of a spoiler. <laughs> I I don't know if he does. I just I didn't know what to put as the title. Oh, Jacob's letter. I'm so glad Jacob and his sister are doing. Okay. Jesus Christ, Jacob. They deserve some peace. Oh my God. 
<laughs> I'm glad I get this as an option to read it instead of trying to read that chicken scratch. Holy shit. May 29th, 2017. Hola, Sean. Sorry I did not write to you sooner, but this was the first time I've had a chance to relax after we got out of Haven Point. Thanks to you and your brother, I still can't believe it really happened. So bizarre. Sarah Lee and I do miss our parents, but we're not ready to let them know we were where we are yet. We will figure it out later. With the money you gave me, I could pay a month's rent in advance for a room in a small beach town on the coast. Sarah Lee loves it. She's much better now thanks to the antibiotics. We're doing great. The most important thing to me is my sister, just like your brother. You're lucky to have each other and we were blessed when you both came our way. I'm trying to track down our Humboldt crew, so I'll keep you posted. I hope everybody's okay after that night on the farm. We all deserve a break and a better future. Please let me know when you make it to the other side. You and Daniel got this. Give our little hero a big hug. Take care, Jake. See, like, why why, why is he not a romance option? Why did I have to fucking settle for dreads? I don't understand. Like, he cares about his sister. so good to have a home again <laughs> because he's annoying <laughs> glad they're back on track hmm. I'll always have a crew out there uh yo Diaz our boy Jacob hooked us up with your P.O. box you can't hide your ass from us bitch we know you're in the desert like a lizard miss ya penny Hope you and Daniel are free now. Colorado is more weed and rednecks, but less violent. We can chill until we decide where the fuck to go next. Hannah. Hard to believe Finn isn't here to start shit anymore, and we don't miss him for that, but he'll get a few more songs out of me. We want to remember him from his, for his angles. <laughs> for his angels, not his demons. Um, Mexico isn't that far, so get ready for some immigrants coming your way. Take care of your brother and let him take care of you. Peace out, Casty. And yeah, we got a phone number. Whoa. Calm down, shit. Oh, I can use it. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll do that last then. Oh, thank God we do have eye medicine. Eye lube handy. Your eye lube? I don't need it as much. Your eye lube? My guy. It's not your eye lube. Ugh. I wish Karen didn't tell me she got a rattlesnake out of the toilet last week. I mean, would you rather not know about it and then sit down and have it, like, eat your snatch or something? I don't know. She changed my diapers, but it feels kind of awkward to be here. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's snip on Karen's shit. had no clue there was a network of seed pirates. <laughs> Karen's a real-life hacker. Arid land special offers amaranth, beans, squash, corn. See also hand pollinating your crops, harvesting, storing seeds. Karen takes on some small piece works for a living. <laughs> Must pay better than poetry. Hi, Karen. Thanks for your last advice column. We got quite a response and a lot of hits. I know you don't want a social media footprint, but you could generate a lot of clicks with your insights. Looking forward to your next piece. Please make sure to send your invoice for May and June. Okay. Oh, hey, fan. Man, I'm still not used to this heat out here. Brody's so good at describing painful situations. Oh, Brody! And seeing the good into it. Good old Brody. Let's see what he has to say. You can go home again by Brody Hallway, Salt Lake, Utah. Or Salt Lake City, Utah. The last time I saw my mother before this year, I was telling her to leave me the fuck alone. That I was done with the whole f bullshit family. My real fam were the strangers I met on the road, who become who became friends, not my family, who became strangers. I adopted all the online connections I made around the world and all those wandering souls that I would encounter on my journeys ahead. You'll be reading about them right now, except the next time I saw my mother, she was in a hospice care at our Utah home. Her body light and frail as a web, holding my hand and telling me that she was sorry about everything that kept us apart for most of my adult life. My mom was dying of cancer, and she was sorry. So I cried. She cried. My brother cried. We all cried. And all the years of family bullshit blew away to dust, like that. Finger snap sound. <laughs> I just wasn't mad anymore. I didn't know it would be so easy or so hard. It didn't mean the past didn't happen or that I wasn't responsible in my own way. My brother used to tell me I was a fake liberal, because while I was out trying to save the world, he had to take care of, my, of mom and the family estate. 
Maybe he was right, but I told him that he also had the money to take care of them. God damn, if I was in charge of the finan finances, I would have given away the family estate and we'd be broke, living in a co-op. My brother knows this. Families are just fucking weird. Society tells us to love your parents and siblings simply out of blood and chance, but what, what if you hate each other? What if you're only linked by random DNA? What if? Oh, what? Whatever, it doesn't matter. I've seen the best and worst of people everywhere I roll. You tend to have those extremes at 3am on an empty gas station or on some desolate freeway. Yes, I've seen strong families bond in hard times. I know there are big siblings out there who will always care for their little siblings and vice versa. They helped me to understand our fragile fil filial ecosystem. In her last hours, my brother and I held my mom's thin fingers as she passed on to a place I hope is better than the one she came from. After she was gone, I found a stash of some old school essays and stories, the only thing I was good at in school. I never knew she kept this stuff or that she cared. Even if we never understood each other, she must have been a little proud that I went my own way and tried to be a force for good. Mothers know how to make you cry like a little bitch. The first time tears had burned my eyes in a long time. It felt good. So now I've come back to a home I once vowed to never return. I don't feel so alienated this time, even if I still am. Like I say too often, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Now I have a des now I have an estate to deal with and more responsibility than I actually want. But I have to see this as karma or destiny or the dharma of the privileged. Don't panic, but I may be taking a break from my life on wheels, just to see who or what I can help. Now I have more resources to spread around. I'm sure my brother will approve, insert sarcasm, if we're still talking after all this memorial bonding. Okay, it's not a happy ending, but maybe it's a hopeful one. And speaking of hope, given the sad state of this sad nation, I've been thinking it's time to move outside my comfort zone. Send dispatches from places and people I'm not so familiar with. Places I can explore to tell new stories from. Like Canada, or Mexico, or The Road Never Ends. Oh, there's a third. Yeah, I ghosted her. But so glad to see Lila's back. Wait. <laughs> um, are you, like, logged in? It looks like you're logged in. They can track that shit. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Uh, me during the day. All good under control. Me at 3 a.m. in my bed. <laughs> oh, God, I see the cat. You see the cat meme right there? Uh, Lila Park uploaded a new profile picture. Uh, I hope nobody's mad I've been out of touch. Brain needed a timeout. Yes, it can happen to me, too. People are such pussies about mental health. Just talk and take care of each other, for fuck's sakes. Adam Bards. Hold up, I'm swinging by. Lila Park waiting for you. Uh, hello, fam. I got you. Be ready. <laughs> I'm sorry about that fucking cat meme. <laughs> okay, so what's on the USB? Whoa. I should have gone through that flash drive weeks ago. Okay, hey, now. Aw. Aw. Cuties. Lila always knew how to crack me up. Cool. Um. Am I supposed to take this again? Oh. I should have gone through that flash drive weeks ago. Uh huh. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess there's no more to do with that. Let's go on outside. Hmm. Arthur and Stanley probably want their telescope back. Well, they can fucking wait. Nice mess. <laughs> Daniel will never change. It's nice to play games with Daniel again. <laughs> Karen likes to join us, too. Still can't believe she's kept it. Hmm. Karen taught me some cool off-the-grid shit. Yo, can we, like, piss in that and then we'll clean our water? Oh, we can climb up that. That's cool. Looking at this place, 
I see that Karen really wanted to get away from it all. Um, who are we Maybe. discussing this with? Karen, you are so busted. Hey, oh, okay. Do you miss Beaver Creek? I miss having a house. But the town was kind of dead. But I really miss Chris. And Grandma and Grandpa. I'm just glad we're still a family out there. Oh, yo, we truly living that trash life with up. Oh, hey, yes, please. Okay, just draw now. Don't think about anything else. Hmm. Pretty good. You call that pretty good? Got a good picture of it. Like this? You call I'm this pretty good? <laughs> draw biomechanical fantasy, draw wolf pack. Let's do wolf pack. Okay, just draw now. Don't think about anything else. Looks pretty good. Such a critic. <laughs> can see why Karen lights it out here. It just took a while. She really doesn't want to be a part of society. Except just this tiny one. She did screw us over though. But Daniel's so happy to have her back. Get to know her. I still don't know how I feel. Gotta let him do his inner monologue. Man, put a band-aid on your... On your wind! <laughs> on your wound. I mean, that's what that is. It's a giant band-aid. What you mean? <laughs> what you mean? Okay, let's discuss the water tank. Dude. We could put red food coloring in the water and turn this into a blood tank. Oh, yes. Then I could be zomboy fighting vampires. Sucks that we can't get food coloring out here. Water management is kind of a big thing around here. Okay. We could also try to be self-sufficient when we're in Mexico. Oh god. She's a she <laughs> Let's check out these crops, these hot crop okay, can I walk? No matter what happened before. Karen did hook us up here. Excuse me, water boy. Did you remember to feed the crops? I never forget. Mom, but no way I could grow stuff like she can. Uh, maybe in Mexico. Oh yeah, we can grow a lot of stuff there. I wonder how we're gonna get over the wall. Is Daniel just gonna like yeet me across the wall? Karen practices what she preaches. She barters with her food. 
Not money. Okay. David's trailer. David always wants to help. But he's tough to figure out. I don't know what that means. But oh shit, y'all got solar panels? Yo, that's fucking dope. Pretty smart. You're never gonna run out of sun in the desert. That's true. That's fucking true. Yo, that's tight. <laughs> that's actually really cool. Jump. Better start them squats. Hell yeah. Nah, I just, I just do that hiking this game. Part of town oh, is shit. Dead this time of year. Wow. I should stay around here. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, you're really controlling me, huh? You're really controlling me. I hope the UFOs are listening. Hey, David, are you in Sut? No, he's not. Okay, well. <laughs> so I'm guessing I can't go over here in general. Yeah, I can't go over here. Okay. Daniel's. Oh my god, Chris! I should bring the telescope back to Art and Stan before I forget. Oh my god, Art and Stan can fucking wait. Hey, your Captain Spirit drawing was awesome. I could show it to Chris. Do you think he can visit us down in Puerto Lobos? Yep. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Instead of snowmen, we can make sand castles. Yeah. Daniel still misses Chris. Hmm. I miss Chris too. Wish I could be as cool and as wise as these guys when I get older. <laughs> Life is a journey. Better stay home. Morning, Sean. Ah! Morning, guys. I don't know you. <laughs> Arthur and Stanley cannot wait for the 4th of July. <sighs> Me neither. Birdhouse. Look at that. I thought there was only vultures in the desert. Nah, that's just in real life. Oh. Hey, y'all. Um. Listen, I'll give you your telescope. I, I, I gotta look around. <gasps> what bear? Yo, please tell me they stole that <laughs> from that bitch. You think they picked this up at the gas station? I hope not. I sure wish we had him around now. He was a good guy. Oh, not again. <laughs> it's kind of cute, though. Like, listen, it's cute because it's not attached to a racist bitch, okay? <laughs> oh, hey! Now that's some real patriots. Damn right. Okay, so how far can I go here? Am I like allowed? There's a barbecue over here. <laughs> These guys are like social directors here. I still love to party. Anything over here? No. I don't think I can go across the road. Oh shit, I can. Dope. Okay. We helped Joanne set up this giant vacuum with binoculars as David calls it love the energy out here with everyone building stuff as they please okay can I check out this place Joanne hi Joanne glad to see that artists are allowed to make a mess Karen and Joanne spend evenings playing and chatting. <laughs> kind of like me and Lila. Uh-oh. Back in the day. He's using his powers. So <laughs> I love it. Joanne says she needs all this junk to grow inspiration from. 
There's power cuts all the time here. But no one's really bothered by it. I love how they recycle everything into art, construction, or agriculture here. That is pretty dope. This place is the ultimate playground for Daniel. Wow, that's actually a pretty nice bike. Joanne can throw a total rager out here. But without asshole neighbors. Hell yeah. Um, I don't think I can go in here yet. Yeah, I can't go in here right now. Oh shit, what? Dude, remember when you totally fell asleep during that Bollywood flick? Because it was so lame after those cool cartoons. <laughs> Whatever. You missed Priya and Stanley teaching me how to dance. No, I didn't. You can't dance, dude. <laughs> wow. Just called out. Love watching movies under the stars. Like a drive-in with no cars. Oh shit. What's up, Joanne? See for yourself. Man, check this out. Okay, Daniel. Let's take a little break. Got it. That child is something special. Yeah. I hear this one a lot. Don't worry. Mm, yeah, I bet. <laughs> but you have your own talent, Sean. I'm dead serious. I thought that was a kite. <laughs> Talent? Thanks. But I still have a lot to learn. Of course you do. Only dumbasses think they know everything. It's okay to not know stuff. <sighs> Don't worry so much about the outcome. An artist has to take a leap of faith about every other week. Did you always want to be an artist? <laughs> Good grief, no. I tried very hard not to be one. Till I realized it was useless. Listen, if you want to be an artist, you will be. It's not always easy. But in the end, it's pretty fucking cool. Speaking of, do you mind giving me a hand here? Oh, uh, I don't know if I can. Yes, you can. I just need your input. Okay? Okay. Okay. Like, I love putting my nose in sure. other people's business. Are you kidding me? Uh, Hell yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, go stand over there. Daniel, you ready to start again? Oh, yes. Hold on. Oh, shit. What is that? 